two this weekend and we're starting off at the Eagle Bank Arena in Fairfax, Virginia. This one's brought to you by Tom Brown's TGB Promotions and it's going to be broadcasted on Fox in North America and ITV4 in the UK. So this one features Jarrett Hurd who's 23 and 0 and Julian Williams who's 26, 1 and 1. We've got three straps on the line in this particular fight. It's the IBO, the IBF and the WBA on the line. Williams is ranked number four by the WBA and he's ranked number one by the IBF. Now, Heard is 28 with 23 wins, 16 of them by KO, giving him a KO percentage of 70. Williams, on the other hand, is 29 with 26 wins and 16 KOs, giving him a KO percentage of 62. Also on this undercard, we've got Paulus Abanda and Stephen Fulton. Now, this is a 12 round fight for the IBO World Super Bantamweight title. So you might want to look out for this just to give you some statistics. Abanda is 27, 2 and 0 and Stephen Fulton is 15 and 0. Um, these are the two fights of significant interest on this particular fight card and let's keep it moving. Next up, we move over to the convention center in Tuscan, Arizona. This one's brought to you by Top Rank and Pellis Boxing Promotions, all right? So this one's gonna be broadcasted on ESPN in North America and Box Nation in the UK. And it features Miguel Bachel and Francisco Vargas. So Bachel is 35, one and zero, and Vargas is 25, one and two. The WBC Super Featherweight strap is on the line here. Bachel is 27, with 35 wins, 31 of those by KO, giving him a KO percentage of 89. Vargas on the other hand is 34, with 25 wins, 18 by KO, giving him a KO percentage of 72. Now, Vargas is ranked number one by the WBC, and Bachel is not ranked by any of the other sanctioning bodies. But the fight I'm looking forward to the most on this card is Emmanuel Neveretti, versus Isaac Dogbo or Dogbe. Neveretti is 25, 1 and 0. Isaac Dogbo is 21 and 0. The WBO strap is on the line here. For those of you that remember, Dogbo lost his WBO strap to Neveretti. Neveretti just pieced him up, man. Dogbo couldn't really get past the jab and as a result, he took a bit of a beating. So this is the rematch. And, you know, we're going to have to see whether Dogbo can correct some of the issues that he had in the first fight to see whether he can pick up his WBO strap again. Wait, hold on a second. This brother looks like Marlo Stanfield Rudeway. Yo. <laughs> anyway, a lot of people, you know, were kind of gunning Dogbo and saying that, um, yeah, he got pieced up and rah, rah, rah. But look, listen, I still ride with Dogbo, man. I hope that he, he's corrected some of the issues that he had um, in the first fight, as I say. Um, I don't know whether he, whether he has or not. I don't have a line into his camp, even though he trains just down the road for me. But, you know, it's pretty clear what he needs to work on. And Dogbo is a warrior. He's got a lot of the fundamentals already wrapped up and sewn down. It's just, you know, he just needs to work on dealing with taller and bigger fighters than him because Dogbo is obviously uniquely small. Um, needs to work on his defense a little bit. But um, a lot of people also have written him off before the fight has even, you know, begun and said, look, man, you know, because he took such a beating in the first one, people were just convinced that, you know, that there's nothing that he can do to um avenge the loss and i'm saying nah man like give him a chance in it like he um he realizes his mistakes i've listened to some of his interviews and that and um let's give him a chance and see what he can do man because I, I know he's a warrior do you know what i mean and in actual fact i know that dog bow is better than never ready it's just some fundamentals that have let him down in the fight you know what i mean so yeah it is what it is but anyway those are the two fight cards that um i got for you this weekend let us know your thoughts and opinions and all that. I'm out.
نهو 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 Make it better. 